I've been talking a lot about Ethereum's move over to proof of stake on this channel, how they are moving in their long timeline over to Casper, away from proof of work. And uh, today I want to discuss the challenges and the problems and the trade-offs there are along the way on the road towards proof of stake, because there are a lot of them which they need to overcome. They have overcome a lot, but they have more challenges on the way. So what is so difficult about proof of stake? What makes it so difficult? That is what I'm going to talk about today and it's incredibly important to understand because if you can't grasp the real philosophical differences between proof of stake and proof of work, not only in the simple sense of what they are, then you have trouble actually choosing you know, with your investments or the projects that you engage in. What do they actually mean? What, what actual consensus algorithm are they implementing and what trade-offs does that mean? That is what I want to talk about today. So I hope that you are excited and if you are you can smash that like button as usual and if you're not subscribed already get subscribed to the channel it means a lot so please do that and you can also follow, follow me on Twitter now so that's awesome you can see the link down there I think <laughs> and also check out the academy of course there's a link to our academy in the description the next course coming up at the end of this month is actually a Bitcoin course it's a Bitcoin programming course basically where we deep dive into Bitcoin you'll learn how to write uh, script the actual uh, programming language of Bitcoin is gonna be really exciting so check out the Academy by clicking the link below all right so let's get into today's topic and today's topic is not going to be proof of work versus proof of stake which one is the best because I don't really care I don't really care I just want the consensus algorithm to work that's it this video is more about how does the road to proof of stake look like what are the trade-offs that we have to make in order to get there and basically this is uh, from an Ethereum perspective because I've made a lot of videos on, the, uh, on Ethereum's way there, on their way to Casper and how long that timeline actually is and what the different steps are. If you haven't checked out the video, I'll leave it in the link in the description. If I remember, I always forgot, forget to put links in the description, but leave a comment otherwise if I forget. Okay, so either way, uh, we know about the problems of proof of work, right? We, know, we all know about the issues that proof of work and the critique that it gets in terms of emissions electricity and equipment and all of that that we so-called waste on mining and uh, that's a fair argument for for most purposes even though we get a lot of value back from it it is a fair argument to say that if we can find a better system that would be good and uh, there are some inherent uh, inherent jobs that the consensus algorithm needs to fix one of those is for example that it needs to uh, it needs to protect the blockchain from denial of service attacks. Basically, when you just spam the network with transactions or with blocks that are useless, and proof of work does that because you know there's a cost associated with producing blocks in terms of electricity. So therefore, it's not uh, it's not um, from a uh, from a hacker's perspective, it's not uh, beneficial to just produce a bunch of blocks that won't give you any reward because it just costs you money. And proof of work solves the same thing because in proof of stake, in proof of stake, if I, I said it wrong, in proof of stake, they also solve the same issue with denial of service because you actually need to stake your coins. So you need to have Ethereum in this case, probably, and you have to stake them and you lock them up and then you get to be a part of the mining pool or the verifier pool, the block producer pool. And you get a small chance uh, to actually produce the next block if you have staked your coins. And if you do it wrong, if you produce a bad block, then you will lose your stake. So it's more of a game theory based type solution where you risk your investment and therefore you need to produce blocks that people will uh, accept so that the consensus is upheld. So they, solve the, they have the denial of service problem solved because uh, even though you had bad actors, they don't want to risk their investment by staking coins that they would, then would lose because they produce a bunch of bad blocks. So what are the actual problems that or trade-offs that proof of stake will face? Well, I will talk about two of them today and many of you maybe have heard of them before, but uh, many of you probably haven't. So the first problem is the nothing at stake problem and then we'll come to the long range attack problem later on but the nothing at stake problem is the problem that uh, you no longer have the concept of the longest chain wins or the chain with the most proof of work because that is really how it works in proof of work uh, let's see here we have a 
a drawing uh, pad and uh, I'm not very good at drawing but I'll do my best so here is a chain right we have blocks these are blocks as you can see and in proof of work systems the valid chain if this were to fork right here the uh, the, the valid chain of where miners are going to you know they're going to choose chain which chain to build on is the chain with the most proof of work not necessarily the, the, the longest one but the chain with the most proof of work done the chain which has the most resources invested into it so therefore miners chooses the chain based on that but if this same scenario happened oh, i'm sorry you can't really see all of this okay well you can you see what i mean in, if this happened in proof of stake, then there is no cost associated with actually putting new blocks in. As long as you're staked, there's no direct cost with producing a block. So that means that since I don't know which chain is going to win, there's no such concept as most proof of work in the chain. The most profitable thing I could do is to mine or produce blocks on both chains. So I've staked my coins and now I will be mining on both of these chains because that way I am almost guaranteed to get a profit right because some one of these chains are going to win in the end right so I just produce blocks on both chains and what if this happens a bunch of times what if uh, this is just splits all the time and I start producing blocks on all chains and eventually everyone is doing the same we have a hundred parallel chains and no one knows which is the correct one and this is a huge problem but in Casper, they have solved it by actually being able to check if people produce blocks on multiple chains and then penalize people and remove their stakes. So that is a problem that Casper have solved. And there's no real trade-off in that necessarily, like we will see with the next issue. Because the next issue is what we call long-range attacks. And it is is based on the same problem, really. And this is to be likened to a or compared to a 51% attack in a proof-of-work system where we basically, you know, we have, uh, we have the ability in a proof of work system to actually hack the network or produce wrong blocks or double spend transactions if we have 51% of the hash power. But that requires a lot of investments, right? Because you have to buy mining equipment, you have to buy electricity. And right now the hash power in the Bitcoin network as an example is huge, so it will be very expensive. But in a proof of stake system, there is no cost associated with producing blocks. All I have to do is to stake my coins and I can produce blocks. So I could, I'm going to make another, I'm going to make another drawing pad here. So I could theoretically, if the chain is uh, just going along uh, like it usually does. And I could on my own, I could mine a chain without any you know, investment. On, on my own computer so it gets it gets even larger it is a huge chain and uh, I could spread that across the network and say this is the correct chain and there's no principle that other nodes will actually select chain because there is no such principle as the uh, longest chain wins or the chain with the most proof of work wins there is uh, there is no such principle so if you are a node that has been in this system since the beginning, you know that this chain is the legit chain. This is the legit chain. Because you have been here from the beginning, you know that this chain is only me messing about. I just put out this chain one week ago and produced a bunch of blocks because now it's not expensive to produce blocks. I can produce 1 million blocks at a time and it just it's free. So that means that if you, if you are an old node, you can know that this chain is the legit one and you can continue to work on this chain. Uh, but if you are a new node that has just come onto the system, you've been offline for a time and there are a bunch of these chains out there, how can you know which chain is the legit one? How can you know which chain is the right one? Well, I would have to, I could query the, all of these uh, nodes for chains. Now I can get different chains, different lengths. One could be long, one could be short. I don't know because there's no principle here of the longest chain win. So how could I know? Well, that is the problem, right? Because now I need to trust someone to tell me which is the legit chain. And some people would probably say that this is not a realistic problem because uh, you wouldn't have a bunch of bad actors all the time 
uh, convincing people of bad chains and people aren't offline for that long so they would know which is the original chain but this introduces the concept of having trusted nodes and as far as i'm concerned there's not a simple solution to this problem this is a trade-off between uh, trustlessness of proof of work system where i could take the longest chain or the chain with most pr most proof of work uh, and this is a trade-off where we increase efficiency we uh, increase uh, you know uh, we re reduce emissions and electricity spending but we step away a little bit from the trustlessness perspective because i need to have some trusted notes that i trust that can tell me which is the current value chain which is the current value chain that i'm going to mine on if i'm a new node that have been offline for some time just coming to the system they need to tell me which is the most trusted nodes so there's no objective way of finding the real chain and as far as i know this as i said this hasn't there's no simple solution to this problem but if any one of you know any solution that has been discussed in regards to this issue please leave it in the comment section so that we can discuss it but as far as i'm concerned this is a trade-off but if you have any ideas or you've seen anyone find a solution to this please leave it in the comment i would love to check it out and discuss with you over there and that was really everything that i wanted to say in this video these are the two problems that i mainly see with proof of stake and why it's so difficult it is the um, it is the nothing at stake problem and the long range attacks that is the issue because and of course the long range attack simply means that i can uh, i can come up with all of these uh, long chains i can mine them on my own very very fast and then i can introduce them to the system and no one knows which is the correct chain so is all of this going to be an issue for Ethereum or for any other proof of stake system that's coming out? I don't think so. I think they will solve it and it will be a trade-off as I said. It will be a trade-off between uh, full trustlessness or basically full trustlessness and some more efficiency and they will probably coexist. So that's not a problem. So I think they will solve it. And with that being said, I think I'm done with this video. So if you like this, you can hit the like button. If you disliked it, you can hit the dislike button. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel either way so that you come back for the next video. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section as usual. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.